G'day fellow skiers, in this video we're gonna do the second full body workout for skiers. And I'm out here with my buddy and Stomp It's Own strength coach, Ian. Hello. Are you ready to make me sweat again? I am. Nice, let's do it. All right, so here we are, day two. Let's get to work. Are you ready? Yeah. Let's get started. So activation, we're gonna do world's greatest stretch. Rationale for this is that you are hitting multiple muscle groups through this dynamic effort activation. You can add hamstring stretches to this, you can add inchworm, but obviously Jens is a little bit handicapped, so he's just gonna go through this, opening up T-spine a little bit into the hips as well. It does feel great. Good. Of world's greatest, quite a statement, but I like it. All right, so we're looking at kind of getting the shoulders back a little bit, so hands behind the head. We're going to bring that in and just moving forwards and backwards, opening those shoulders, closing those shoulders. Do two or three of those and then drop into a quarter squat position. Same thing, this is going to make the movement a little bit more challenging. And then get as deep as you can. Exactly, really curling it in and opening up. Curling it in and opening up. Okay, obviously we talk about opening up. Essentially what we're doing is we're just activating more proprioception, more feeling throughout your entire body, okay? Moving on, plyometrics, you feeling okay? Yeah. Good. Okay, so for the line hop, you're gonna keep your feet close together. Remember those contact, that contact time needs to be minimal and from side to side, thinking about skiing, okay? Ready and go. Fast as you can, go, 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 yes. 12 reps should be enough, Jens, and then rest. I think I lost the count a little bit. Okay, yeah. Surprisingly hard. Count, 12 to 15 reps. And we're, you know, maximum kind of two sets of this exercise is if it's plenty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. So, lateral bounds. Nice. Okay, so thinking skier, starting on one side, moving laterally from one side to the other. And again, keeping the contact time minimal. Kind of like a carb time. Exactly. Okay, should I go? Yep. Uh, rest. <laughs> okay, so I think with this again, like keep keeping the the ground contact time minimal, but also, you know, the rep count probably six to eight is enough. Complete reps, not mm -hmm. not each side. Okay. As soon as the form starts to break down, we need to stop the exercise. Okay. Okay. So one, two, three. That's kind yeah, of exactly. And think nice. about what you do in your upper body as well. Mm -hmm. Right. All right. So again, two sets of this maximum, and then moving on. All right. Next exercise. Drop to rebound. Okay, so typically this is the kind of thing that we'll do um, to kind of condition those tendons. And what we want to do is we're going to step off with the lead leg. We're keeping the box really low. And I think for anyone who's beginning with this exercise, they should not really be much higher than this because there's a lot of force going through the tendons and muscles. So it's best to practice with a low position first, increase the height, but even then you shouldn't be coming much higher than just below the knee here. Okay, so Jens is gonna drop with one foot and react as quickly as he can, moving into that horizontal plane. And again, taking a little rest between, you don't need to go straight into it, just walk back, kind of shake it out, think about the movement, reacting immediately as soon as you drop off. You can switch legs. Okay, you can still see that there was quite a lot of contact time with Jens on that. So the idea is that we wanna keep that contact time as minimal. Good. Better. Uh, it felt like I was faster. So the point is that you're reacting here as well, okay? So you could also talk about that crossover between plyometrics and more explosive or the intention to move, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, let's move on. So again, three, two to three sets, maybe three to maximum five reps on that if you're really fresh, okay? But keeping it on the lower side. Okay, so. From here, we're gonna move on to more ground, uh, ground contact. All right, so we're doing the counter movement jump with a stick, okay? So if we keep the arms involved, then they're going to elevate you a little bit higher. But this, for this exercise, we wanna just keep them on the waist. Okay, so we're relying just on the lower body. We're going into a quarter squat position, trying to generate as much force as you can, keep your core nice and strong, exploding up, and then landing, really stick that landing through the entire foot Hold that for a split second before resetting that counter movement jump. So hands on the hips. 
brilliant. Trying to just land as even as possible, Jens. Better. Good. And something you'll often see is people they really want to get more height. And obviously the more you do this, the less height you're going to get. So they end up going down even further into almost a squat jump. Key thing here is that the most power that you can generate is from this power position here into the ground and up. And counter movement jump is used quite often in athletic performance to measure fatigue. So if we see that your jump goes down, the jump height goes down, then often we can see perhaps maybe you've been doing a little bit too much and it's a, a key marker of fatigue. Yeah, in a typical freestyle camp, I guess we have, have mad issues with this. They can't do this on skis. They think you, like you said, should go down really deep to generate a high pop, but mm -hmm. this is enough. So it's a nice transfer. So this exercise makes a lot of sense kind of for, for as a transfer effect. For you Absolutely. As well, right? yeah. Okay, so we're going for med ball slam now. So Jens is getting a pro at this. He's done it before, right? Yeah. Okay, so triple extension. So we're going up with the ball. Okay, we're, we're exposing all that explosive energy, excuse me, <laughs> through the floor. We're going up tall and then down. A nice, flat, even foot position. Explosive as you can, Jens. Let's go. Better. You can see it starts to overbalance. Let's try and really stick that landing. Stomp that landing. Better. Still landing a little bit towards the back. Try and land directly through the middle of the foot. I think it's... Okay, so he's jumping back a little bit, which is also something that people mm -hmm. are gonna do in the beginning. So it might be worthwhile just to practice without any weight and coming straight down. Mm -hmm. You know, stick that landing again just to feel, to, so that you can feel exactly what that movement mm -hmm. is from start to finish. All right, so we've done the plyometrics, done the ballistics, or those crossover exercises. We're gonna go on to the deadlift. Squat, deadlift, probably two of the best exercises. What's your favorite? Oh, deadlift by far. Deadlift for sure. I love yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I'll deadlift until I die. Yeah. Me too, I hope. But right now, I can't with this broken hand and arm, so. I'm going to show the exercise. Okay, so with this, obviously quite a complicated exercise, worthwhile getting a bit of extra coaching on that if you can. Um, but you know, if you're struggling with that, you can also just start much lighter. You can also go to a sumo variation, which is less range of motion. But for today, we're going to benefit from this by just coaching the conventional version. Okay, so that means we are going to start with the bar pretty much over where we tie our shoelaces. Okay, knees straight. We're gonna bend the knees until the shins are roughly touching the bar. And then we're gonna hinge from the hip. And from here we go down, shoulder blades are roughly in line with the bar. And that's your setup point. So as soon as you hinge and you can make contact with that bar, that's your starting point. From here, you wanna pull the shoulders back, squeeze the butt tight, and then stand up straight. And you should focus on that pulling quite hard and then controlling the eccentric back down again, as we talked about before. Lock the shoulders into the back, stand up hard, and then return. Try and keep that bar as close as possible, using your core, driving hard through the ground. So again, between six, 10, 12 reps, something like that, the lower end of the range, two to three sets to begin with, progressing those over the weeks. Nice, I wish I was doing them, as I love it. So Good. what's the next strength element? So moving on, we'll get Jens to do this part because he uh, doesn't need his arms mm. so much, at least not on one side. Before we move on, yeah. why did you put that one first? Okay, sorry, yeah. So primary, this is a slightly more fatiguing exercise. So, you know, we want to have the most amount of energy for this first. And then we'll look at these secondary exercises such as kind of unilateral stuff or core exercises as supplemental to, to this. So we want to be as fresh as possible for this. Post ballistics, obviously those are more important to have those exercises first. And then the strength, the primary strength. That's nice. the next part. So side plank. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to try and get this leg off the ground with the toe pointed down, knee Duh. locked out, exactly. And then we want to be feeling the side of the hip here and also a little bit through this side of the body here, so through the, through the right side on the end. So you're probably feeling quite difficult. <laughs> okay, rest. It's absolutely hard. So you can just drop your hip, and an easier position here, which would not involve as much core, would be just to lie on your side, and then you can also just lift 
exactly, you can just lift up the hip and this is gonna be working the glute medius on the side of the hip here, which is quite useful as a, an exercise transfer over to skiing. Okay, so again, this is a similar kind of thing to a hollow hold or a plank. We wanna be holding this exercise 30 seconds and you know, essentially you're doing as many of those reses as possible before you know, the, the technique starts to break down. And for Jens, it looks like maybe three. <laughs> Okay, Jens, oh, let's wait. put you into a plank. I want to try something real quick. So, you know, I think world record for this is like eight to 10 hours. I don't know, don't quote me on that. Um, but essentially we're working a bunch of muscles through the back, obviously uh, rectus abdominis here, trying to keep the knees locked out. Already looks like it's quite challenging for Jens, but if he moves his feet back and he keeps his elbows where they are so that this um, position is changing, it should start to affect the stability a little bit more and he has to, engage his core muscles even more to make this exercise work. How Way that? harder. You're much feeling much harder, right? Absolutely. Okay, rest. All right, so last exercise, we're gonna to go to unilateral again. And I wanna have a look at those adductors on the inside of the leg. Again, super useful for skiing. And not particularly a muscle that we tend to hit that often in training. You kind of have to specifically look at it for the most part. So we're gonna do a Cossack squat. Jens knows what that is, so let's have a look. So with this exercise, you can progress it a bunch of different ways. You can turn this toe up, which is generally the, the easier way, the easier option, or you can keep it turned down, making sure that that knee is nice and straight. Right For the most part, keeping the toe up is gonna be an easier option and reducing the range. So not going quite as deep as Jens, as long as you can feel that on the inside. And of course you can load this with a kettlebell, easier for him not to do it because he's got his cast on, but he's gonna do it anyway. <sighs> I want to. You don't need too much load with this exercise. And, you know, we might be looking at anywhere from, you know, eight to 12 reps per side. You're not gonna load it too much. Nice. All right, good. Okay, so we've put him through a few paces on a few of those exercises. Obviously we could do a lot more, but just to give some examples of how you can train various different uh, workouts a couple of times a week. If you want to learn even more, check out the link in the description. Ian has prepared an eight-week program for skiers, which is very similar to what he's doing with me and the coaches. Have a nice day and see you in the next one.